Hey everybody, Julie Marchese here. Today is 18th, 2014, and in this video, I'm going to give you guys a little look into the new Excel workbook that I've been creating over the last couple of days. I've spent uh, quite a bit of time and hours uh, into making this workbook. I want to show you the idea behind it, how it helps me, and how uh, you can potentially build something similar. Um, I'll show you a bit of the actual Excel formulas that I use and how I actually go about making a program or rather uh, a workbook like this and how it could be useful in the markets today, kind of similar to my last video where I showed you another correlation workbook. This is also just to give you a brief description of what this Excel workbook is about. Essentially, I what you have in front of you right here, you're looking at a correlation matrix. So essentially, you're looking at the correlations between all these major markets. So you can see I have the S&P, NASDAQ, Dow, Russell, the 5, 10, 30 year rates, some uh, commodities markets. You got oil, Brent, um, gold, s silver, copper, and then you got a lot of currency pairs there. So these are major markets that I like to watch and obviously influence each other. Um, and basically over here uh, in the blue and red squares and white as well, we can look at the relative, we can look at the correlation um, between uh, two markets. So if I want to look at the correlation between, say, gold uh, and the correlation between gold and, say, the Russell 2000, let's check here, the correlation over the last 10 days, as you can see in my correlation look back period, uh, the correlation in the last 10 days is actually negative and sitting around a negative 0.81. So that's important information, and it, knowing that information is also helpful to what the next part of this workbook. So at first, what you have here is just showing correlations. The next part is you can see here the chart look back period, the normalization look back period, the base market, and secondary markets. All the yellow squares are inputs. So you can see when I change the correlation look back, say if I look at the last 20 days, all these figures update. They update to check the last 20 days to run the correlation. I can, I believe I can bring it back all the way to even 200 or so. And you can see they all update. You can see the colors are actually darker because the longer you go out, the more similar markets tend to look as it's not as granular. I'm going to set it back to a 20 day. And basically what I want to do is I want to manually look at this data and I want to look for markets that are acting similar. So over the last, let's use the S&P as an example. And you can see the base market I put as B because of the corresponding letter here. Which again, this just has to do with um, Excel formulas. The corresponding letter for the S&P 500 is B on my workbook, as you can see right here in this column. So I've set that as B. And I'm also going to take away these other inputs for now. So Basically, I manually look for, um, first of all, uh, obviously, I choose the market I'm looking to analyze, and then I manually manually look for other markets that are uh, behaving similarly over, let's say, over the period that I'm, I've chosen here, 20 days. So you can see the Euro-Yen pair is actually um, pretty highly correlated. I'm going to choose U, so I'm going to put that in my secondary market for now, and that's it. So basically, this workbook allows me to compare a base market and a secondary market or an index of secondary markets. Usually, you want to be using an index because you can just compare two uh, markets very easily on just like any signal chart or any other chart. So, but for demonstration purposes, I'll only start with one now. So I have the chart look back period at 20. I could set it to 20, 50, 100, or even 500. And I have my normalization look back period at 20 as well. Now the normalization look back period is essentially the S&P 500 and the Euro Yen percentage wise fluctuate a lot differently. They have different volatilities. The normalization look back period basically asks how many days do I want to look back to normalize the volatility between the two or multiple asset classes I'm comparing. So it's very simple. If I want to get more of a um, muddled, not muddled, but more of a longer term 
normalization, I will set a higher number. If I want just the last 20 days, see if there's some volatility event occurring in the last 20 days, I'd use a shorter time frame to compare the two. So since I set it at a 20 day chart look back period, I go down to the 20 day chart over here. And as you can see, we have three lines being graphed on this chart. You have the S&P 500, which is our base market. That's going to be in blue. You have the composite. Um, in this case, this is just the Euro Yen, and that's in red. And then you have the difference. So essentially, what this is trying to compare is, is the base market cheap or expensive relative to the composite of correlated markets over whatever time frame you so choose? So I could go back to the correlation matrix and set, say, a 250 chart. Sorry, it has to be one of the intervals. I could set a 500 chart, uh, look back period for the chart, go to the 500 day, and you can see it updates here. You'll notice that the euro yen, which is the red line again in this case, um, was extremely cheap relative to the S&P, and that was a very good buying opportunity in the past, and that's visualized by this black line. And then again, uh, you could see here that it was a, that the S&P 500 was actually cheap relative to the S and relative to the Euro Yen back around um, 225 days from the starting point, which is around 275 days in the past, which was in the beginning of 2015. Um, and you can see that relatively speaking, we're pretty correlated correlated in the most recent time. And again, I'll set it back to say a 50 day look back so we can get more of a broader view. You can see over time the S&P has been getting pretty expensive over the last 50 days relative to the euro yen, and that's some important information. So back to the example, um, you'll notice that I can choose multiple different markets. I only put one for the first example, so let's try other markets that are highly correlated. So you can see the five-year rate is actually pretty correlated. I'm going to put that under the number two slot. Um, I'll also check out the euro that has a pretty high correlation over the last 20 days as it's rallied um, past its 0.39 level. Um, and for some diversification, let's look at another value here. Let's see if I can get a commodity that's been pretty uh, correlated. And actually, gold has seen some correlation, so we'll put that in. So you'll notice when I pull up the chart now that the composite's a little different. You saw it change very quickly. Uh, now, the composite of the markets that I showed sees, seems to be a little less volatile, but actually seems to be tracking the S&P a little better. You know, as the more markets I added that are still pretty correlated to the S&P, it's interesting how um, the composite actually became closer to the S&P's actual action. So this is something that's an even better um, Thing to look at it. If you see the composite of the multiple markets that you're putting in the correlation test act similar to the general market, the base market, that's showing that you have a good composite and you have a good study. So the difference here, the black line or the double black line, is actually more meaningful. You can see it's been hovering around zero. Again, that's showing that they're pretty correlated. But whenever the black line gets below uh, zero or gets to an extreme, that seems to be a pretty good buying point. You see, last time that happened was back in the late January dip. You had some great opportunities to be buying S&Ps here, which worked out very well. And even on these uh, tops here, when we were at upper extremes, that seemed to be good selling points. Above one here and above one and a half here, that seemed to be a pretty good selling point. So now we're starting to get above there. I'd like to see if the composite will continue with the S&P today. The S&P rallied, but the composite of the markets uh, did not, which is telling us that there's some discrepancies here. Um, and basically, the whole point of this workbook is to look for, again, discrepancies and if other markets are trading similar to the broad market. When, you're, when a trend is emerging, for example, in a macro market, you want to see the other integrated macro markets following suit to some degree, or at least showing a broad theme. When that gets out of hand, those can be some great rel uh, uh, relative strength trades, some great mean reversion trades. And uh, most of my analysis is 
It's quantitative, so I am typically looking for mean reversion traits that have a higher probability of success. So this is giving me a better edge, a visual edge, on uh, on whether or not the market I'm analyzing is is cheap or expensive. So now I got a couple minutes left. I'm just going to quickly dive into a little bit how this works, how my Excel workbook works. So I basically have all the data since the year 2000 of all the markets that I have in the workbook. So, you know, the indexes, the rates, the commodities, and the currencies that I'm watching. I have all the data of those markets, just closed data, all the way up until um, uh, obviously present day. So every day I have to manually update this workbook, which is actually pretty simple with eSignal. All I have to do here is I have a quote window of the markets that I'm analyzing. I just hit Control C to copy. I go to my data pool workspace and then I just drag the last, I just copy the last cells and I paste it down here. So it's very simple. Then um, my calculations workbook basically pulls that data and through a series of algorithms that I use from the input here, it chooses the markets that I want to analyze. So in this case, I could have one base market and five other markets that make up the uh, the composite. So at this point, I only have four, and it, and it can tell me how many markets that uh, I'm willing to analyze, and that's obviously to get the composite um, similar to the base market. Um, and basically, I go through a, a test to normalize the data. Essentially, I look at the absolute val value change, so I take every day change, of the S&P, Euro, Yen, 5, Euro, 8, Euro, and Gold in this case. And then I basically do a ratio on that. I average it out for the normalization look back period that I choose, and then I ratio the the actual movements to um, the, the markets and the composites. So for example, naturally the S&P 500 is more, value, more volatile than the Euro, so the Euro is going to have a higher ratio. That's just going to be the case because usually the euro is, usually currencies are a lot less volatile. On the other hand, commodities like gold are going to be more volatile. So I need to normalize that and you can see the ratio there is 0 0.63 to the S&P 500. So essentially step one, pull the data that you want. Specifically, step two, you want to find the ratio, the volatility ratios between the markets so that you, you can normalize it then you got to normalize it. So I always start with a base 100. I take the normalized data utilizing these ratios, and then I, um, I add the percentage changes to get an index. Um, afterwards, if I have more than one market, I need to basically put them all together and divide, and that's where knowing the number of markets you're choosing, in this case four, comes in handy, because you add up all these hundreds and all these different ones, and then you divide by four again, then all I simply do here, the last part of this, is the difference. So I take the base market, I take the composite, and I subtract them to find the difference between the two. And then that gives that essentially gives me these charts here. The 50-day chart, for example, will show you that. You've got your base market in blue, your composite in red, and then you have the difference between the two in black. And this information is extremely helpful in determining whether or not a market is relatively expensive or cheap, and that can really be of help when uh, analyzing, you know, the markets on any given day. You know, if there's a really big update in one market or a really big movement in any market and the other markets aren't really following, these, uh, this graphic and this workbook will be able to pick that up and tell you whether or not, through um, visual aid, whether or not we should look at that, whether or not we're getting to an extreme, or whether or not that's signaling a trend change, a uh, trend beginning, um, and so on and so forth. So to end this video, I hope you guys really enjoyed um, getting a little, you know, to see the workbooks I use and the type of analysis I use on the markets, and uh, hopefully um, that was detailed enough so you guys can replicate it in some fashion. I also just want to say I'd love for you guys to check out uh, my website that I co-founded, um, my group called Leaders Investment Club, if you, if you haven't checked it out already. 
we've been getting some pretty good press recently. We were, we've been on CNBC, a lot of our members, last uh, two weeks ago uh, on CNBC. We've get, been getting a lot of good press, and I'd love for you guys to check it out. Maybe learn a few things on our website. We've got lots of great articles and educational material. I uh, look forward to seeing you there. Also on my website, Marchese Financial. Hope you guys uh, got something out of this video. Have a great day.